This is Times Radio. 20 past five. The Telegraph and the Times have stories. Front page of the Conservatives' manifesto pledges. Sunak offers tax breaks to landlords, says the Telegraph. Uh, and the Times says Tories offer lower taxes and help for home buyers. The Telegraph also got a very funny photograph of uh, Nigel Farage looking very alarmed. And the quote is here, I won't join the Tories, they'll join us. We'll look at Nigel Farage's uh, impact on the election in the papers in just a moment. Um, the Guardian's got a photograph of England flying out to Germany for the Euros. Of course, they play their first game on Sunday. And the Mail has, similar to a couple of other papers this morning, this absolutely awful story. Britain's 12-year-old machete murderers, two boys, yesterday became the youngest to be convicted of murder after a horrific, uh, unprovoked attack on an innocent teenager. And you do just think with horror, why is it uh, that 12-year-olds are, are out with machetes? It is violent, it is abhorrent, it's awful. Let's look at the stories inside the papers in a bit more detail. Joining me to do that, the barrister and broadcaster, Andrew Ebon. Andrew, good morning. Uh, good morning, Rosie. Always a delight to join you. It's, a, it's an absolutely wretched note to start on, but I do want to oh. talk about the front page of the mail because the, the photograph is so intimidating. There's one of the boys who sent this photograph to a girl hours before... Um, he went on to murder. It is so intimidating. Face mask on, eyes open, only the eyes exposed, um, hands in his trousers, armed with a machete. And you think this is a, this is a child, really, 12-year-old. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It's absolutely chilling and uh, is indicative of the sort of age we're living in when knife crime is at an appalling level. And what we need, and I've made this point before, is some inspirational characters at the top who sort of turn around and say, look, it's not acceptable. People shouldn't be living in fear. And you find a lot of these sort of areas where basically the children, they feel as though they have to carry a knife in order to protect themselves. Now, we have to stop all of that because it's a horrendous cycle. But as you say, two 12-year-old boys, they became Britain's youngest convinced convicted murderers since the James Bulger killers all the way back in uh, 1993 when Robert Thompson and John Venables, who were both then 11, were found guilty. Mm. And that dominated the headlines for ever. Um, and it is all, all those years ago, 31 years ago, can you believe it? But but we, we need to stop it. And any one of these crimes is one too many. And it's a culture, isn't it? We need to get away from the culture of people feeling threatened. Um, and, and we need to make sure that we clamp down on it. People say, look, cut down knife crime. We need to make, what are, the, what are those steps? There should be instant penalties and so on and so forth. People shouldn't be uh, uh, having that sort of society where they feel they need to. And how how 12-year-olds are getting their hands on 16-inch machetes anyway. I mean, there's so many uh, failings uh, in this story. It is absolutely uh, heartbreaking. Let's move on to uh, the UK election and the front page of the Telegraph, Andrew. And this photograph of Nigel Farage <laughs> saying, I won't join the Tories, they'll join us. Um, I mean, he says, all marriage plans are off. This is because yeah. Suella Bravman, we were talking about this yesterday, said all the Conservatives and the Reform should, should join hands. That's not going to happen if Nigel Farage has his way. Well, I can tell you what, if you use that photo in a dating app, I can tell you all, all, all marriage plans would be off. It is the most extraordinary photo, which you'll be able to see on the front page. It detracts a bit from his rather glorious goldfish tie by the look of it. Um, but that's what he's saying. But good old Nigel, to his credit, he says he does like Braverman. I do admire her, but I'm afraid at the moment all, all marriage plans are off. And, and he's saying that they could join us as opposed to uh, my joining them. And Nigel is is a glorious character. He, he does dominate the sort of headlines. Uh, and uh, we we need the sort of colourful characters. It's the sort of the days when people used to like Boris. Um, he was the, the Carlsberg of politicians. He could reach part of the electorate that others couldn't reach. He then turned into this Marmite character. Um, Nigel is is pretty similar. He, he does absolutely appeal to lots of the electorate. He has a certain rhetoric that appeals to people in, in, in these troubled times. Um, and he will make a point of being a big character. He did well, that in the and debate. And you talk about troubled times. And I wonder if the, the Farage factor has, whoa, accelerated the reform uh, party. Uh, campaign. However, is it going to get a little bit unstuck? You know, Nigel Farage yesterday said reform had run out of time to vet candidates after one, who has since apologised, said that Britain should have taken Hitler up on his offer of neutrality instead of fighting the Nazis in the Second World War. 
Yeah, it, it's absolutely horrendous, various comments that are made. And and Ben Habib got into to trouble when he was talking about rescuing people from the sea or not, as the case may be. You might remember all of those. And and I always make the point that uh, the reason history repeats itself is people don't learn the lessons from history. And the optics as to uh, what, what people do and, and what people say in an unguarded moment is always going to come back to haunt them in the same way as uh, those who advised Rishi Sunak to come back early from D-Day celebrations. They must have predicted uh, what the headline but that shines the D-Day mistake into different perspective, doesn't it? Oh, yeah, of course it does. And, and you're absolutely right. And you'd never compare uh, the two. It was a stupid, stupid comment to talk about Hitler in any situation. And, and I just didn't I get it's it. More than, it's more than stupid, though, isn't it? Uh, suicidal is 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 that sort of. Thing. I mean, it's ludicrous, absolutely ludicrous. Mm. Uh, and and you and I agree on that. I mean, it's uh, we agree on most things. But uh, but what I always puzzled by Rose is why people don't think. And and anybody who turned around and said, "Well, hang on, I'm going to talk about this and talk about Hitler at all," uh, you know, everybody's going to react, have the the obvious reaction. I think so, the challenge might be Andrew that he had thought, and that is what he thought. And it's only now the comments have been made public that you it all sort of un- unravels. We'll see. Of course, all the parties have had this big rush to kind of get candidates in, in part because they were all taken by surprise by the timing of the election. We're going to talk a little bit about Labour's plans. They're on the front page of the Mirror to look at health for children in a little bit. Um, but I want to talk about, um, from your sort of legal perspective, Andrew, BP, we're going to talk about this in the business news, have yes. tightened the rules on relationships that you can have on colleagues. Why have they changed them? And do you think it's sensible? Well, first of all, it comes as a result of uh, a relationship which um, that their former head had um, and, and he lost. So Bernard Looney was the chap who uh, he quit the board after he'd found he'd not been fully transparent uh, with the board about his workplace relationships. He was 53 uh, when he quit. He had a small number, uh, in inverted commas, of historical relationships with colleagues um, and it caused all sorts of problems. So he lost. I mean, he, big, big loss for him. He lost up to uh, 32.4 million in pay and bonuses because of the serious misconduct. And so what they've done, they've clamped down now and they say, look, if you have any sort of relationship, um, you have to tell us. Uh, and they're trying to protect themselves on, on that sort of basis. The reality is nowadays, Rosie, uh, that the whole dating thing is, is incredibly difficult. Most people meet, meet uh, at work. Uh, I think people are working longer hours and trying to go home early. Well, so I think that used to be the social. case that people met their other half at work. And now I think it's 80% of relationships start online. And you wonder, actually, it might be complexities are around things like you know having to declare uh, that you're in a relationship with someone or people being nervous about overstepping a line or you know being accused of being inappropriate at work which has mean that sort of stifled the ability to have a relationship at work no, I, I think you're absolutely right. And what is, the statistics are there. They've got a, a, online relationships where people are meeting through dating apps. You have the massive rise in my pet subject about AI and AI girlfriends. I mean, it's a, a multi-billion dollar business uh, as a result of people not being able to have it. The, the relationship, uh, having relationships now is, is incredibly dangerous for people. They're, they're very worried as to what, what to do um, and, and, and trying to act appropriately whilst not being accused of being inappropriate. Mm. Uh, but yeah, I, I think now the legal position is, is exactly the that. They're saying it's serious misconduct if you have one of these relationships. They put round a, a, a relevant thing saying, well, you could be result in disciplinary action if you don't comply with the policy. Uh, so it's totally dictating that. And I don't know, at what stage in the relationship do you, you suddenly turn around and say, look, I've got to declare it now. It's a, it, it's, it's a very mm. tricky ground. If there is less flirting in the office, there is less flirting on screen inside the times sex scenes are on the decline in hollywood movies um analysis of the 250 highest grossing films in the us found half released last year had no sexual content that is that a, a bad thing or does it mean actually it's more comfortable watching films or going to the cinema uh, with your parents uh, or with siblings uh, well, I think you could you could pick your movies very well because I have to say some of the movies I've seen over the last uh, several months have been some of the most graphic um, in, in things like Poor Things and Saltburn and so on and so forth. I mean, they, yes, they are certainly, recent exception. Yes, yeah. exceptions to the trend, I think. <laughs> so, so I think they're the most graphic scenes ever. But no, I, I think people want to have the squeaky clean as well. I think you've got uh, uh, certain movies on that with Me Too and, and various other the superhero franchises. Um, and, and I think it, it's good. It's good if people know what 
what they're having, uh, you're working on that on that sort of basis. But they're falling by 70% since 2000 levels. And they're talking about sort of drinking drugs and violence and swearing did not show the same decline over the same period. So you wonder and, where that is. And we've got these intimacy coordinators as well now to make sure yes. that kind of everyone on set feels sort of like they're being looked after when they're filming these scenes based on some pretty awful stories of what's happened in the past. Before you go, Andrew, there is a wonderful story uh, on page three of The Times this morning. Um, and it's about elephants and their oh. characters and their nature. And elephants, so we have found out, have names for each other just like we do. Oh, isn't that glorious? Absolutely. They're, they're not all called Dumbo. What what I love about it is my pet subject, which has helped that. AI and machine learning has helped work out that elephants recognise the deep growls and grumbles and have different names for different people. And what they did, they played back some of these recordings so they could recognise uh, whether it was somebody, if it was Marie, for example, uh, one of their things, they know that it was her that, that was calling them as opposed to somebody else. So I think it's glorious. They say the research is just starting on that sort of basis, mm. but we're learning more and more about talking uh, to the animals. Doesn't that just feel so special that they're kind of chatting to each other by name uh, as well and how they're <laughs> communicating? Glorious. Yeah, move over. Those are my peanuts. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Andrew, thank you. The barrister and broadcaster and president of Octopus TV going through the papers with me this morning. Across the UK, on DAB, online and on your smart speaker, this is Times Radio.